Hello guys and welcome back to your third tutorial in MATLAB. Today we're going to be discussing uh, sequences which is actually a pattern of numbers that um, well it'll come in handy later when we deal with uh, trying to access these things called uh, arrays, you can call them vectors, matrices, uh, what have you. Um, Basically, if you recall back in the previous uh, tutorial, in tutorial 2, when we talked about um, variables that stored multiple values, it will come in handy when we want to uh, access particular numbers within that type of variable. In any case, um, that's one of the uses, but we'll also find them very handy, if not important, for um, displaying and plotting pretty much any type of plot you want to create. If you wanted to say make an x-axis, it's it's nice to have a sequence of numbers to provide as your x-axis. But anyhow, um, let's get to uh, finding out what a sequence is here. So, <clears throat> let's pull up our uh, our workspace again because apparently in the new version of MATLAB it doesn't come with it. Uh, started up, I guess in the beginning, but anyways. Going back to the command window, um, we can create a sequence by uh, one means in which we declare the first number in the sequence, then followed by a colon. We follow that with the number of steps or how big our step size is. So let's say a step size of one and the ending number, so 10. So we, we have a starting number of one, an ending number of 10, and a step size of 1. So this should apparently read out 1 through 10, which it does here. And um, well, we can also take this result and store it in a variable. And as we talked about before, the ANDs is already created for us. It already has the previous uh, computation stored in it. So if we were to type ANDs, we'd get back the variable ands, which is the series of numbers 1 through 10. But we could store it in another variable called numbers, and we could set that equal to our 1 colon 1 colon 10 again. And there you have it. But um, let's say that we wanted to change our step size to 2. So say we had a starting value of 1, then we did a step size of 2 and we end at 10. When we press this in though, we see that we get a step size of 2, but for some reason we don't end up with our final number 10. Well, that's because MATLAB is smart and it knows that it's not going to go over that last number. Instead, it's just going to stop right before it reaches that number using a step size of 2 and your starting number. We can also uh, we can also count backwards as well. So let's say we had a 10 colon. Our starting number is 10. We have a step size of negative 1, and we have an ending number of 1. So we start with 10, and we go back to 1 with a stepping of negative 1, so we're going backwards. And we see we have 10 going back all the way to 1. Now, we can also well here's another example we don't have to always start with one we can have five colon um, one for example to ten that should count five to ten um, and again we could store this value in a variable so say we wanted to do numbers again and change it equal to five colon one oh, sorry uh, well, yeah, 1, then to 10. We have numbers as 5 through 10. And if we wanted to access the first number, as we saw before, we give it an index of 1, because MATLAB starts with an index of 1 as opposed to 0. Uh, those of you familiar with C, again, probably used to the 0. But in MATLAB, it always starts with 1. Um, well. That pretty much uh, pretty much sums up the the basics of creating a sequence in this manner here with the double colon uh, 
notation. If you all, if you just wanted to use a stepping size of one though, a shortcut is really one followed by your starting number followed by your your final number without a step size. Then MATLAB assumes that your step size is one, so we still get one through ten. Now, um, something else that's very handy, we can use some a uh, function called linspace. And in linspace, we don't have to consider that final number. Remember before when we typed in uh, one with a stepping size of two and an ending of ten, it negated or took out ten. But say we wanted to uh, go from one to ten, but we we absolutely had to have a certain number of points. So we don't have to figure out what each one of those numbers is. We can actually type in, say we want, I don't know, five points. We have five points and we want them between one and ten. So it'll use the one and it'll use the ten and it'll put the other points in between. Linearly. That's why, well, I can't say that right, but anyways, it'll put them in there. Like so. As you can see, there's our starting number. One, ten, and our number's in the middle there. That's really handy when you have a really large number you want and you have no idea what the stepping size is going to be. You just want a crazy number of values between two values, say 1 and 10, and say you wanted to have like, I don't know, 45 values. Well, then bam, you have all your numbers there. You don't have to figure out what the step size is. It just gives you your first number, your last number, and a bunch of numbers in between, so you have your fit. 45 numbers. Um, again, this will come in handy. This this uh, particular function when you're plotting or when we learn how to make plots later. But uh, in any case, there's one more function I want to show you before I go today, and that's going to be log space. Now, log space is very similar to lin space, except it separates your numbers out logarithmically. And I can't say that right. I know. That's pretty bad. But anyways, it's handy. I don't know why. Some people use it. I had a professor once who said, you need a no log space. And I'm like, why do I need a no log space? And he's all like, well, it's important because of blah, blah, blah. And I've never used it. So big deal. But this is how you do it. Log space. And say we have 1 through 10. And we had to have a logarithmic spacing between 1 and 10 that's 5 values. Well, there you have it. A logarithmic spacing of values between 1 and 10. 1 and 10. Well, this pretty much concludes uh, this tutorial. Um, and the next one, I have no idea what it's about. It's going to be about, but I'm sure it's going to be amazing. So stay tuned and find out. Um, I guess if you didn't learn anything from this tutorial, then you're a math whiz, and I don't know why you're watching these tutorials, but um, uh, you can keep watching them and whatever, I guess. But I will see you in tutorial four. Take it easy. Adios.